Hello, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Yes, folks, I've built another Authorus Hunter. One I hope that's going to help me solo an Authorus without the help of my teammates. Even though it's good to play we're in a team, in a clan, I want to try and do something by myself. So, I built the biggest ship I had, fitted it with the best weapons I could find, and went on the hunt for an Authorus. Well, it's no surprise that my Orthrus Hunter V2 is based on the Imperial Cutter. Hunting the Orthrus is a completely different kettle of fish, however, and what I found is it's rather hit and miss on where you find them, even if they're in a Thargoid alert system. It is quite hit and miss. What you do, get yourself into the galaxy map and you're looking for the yellow systems, like we've got here in Putas and Voglu. They'll show up as Thargoid alert systems. This means Orthrus is in there spreading about its caustic guft and preparing the system for invasion. Once in the system, get yourself into the FSS and do some scanning. You're looking for non-human signal sources, but level 4. And when you look them up, you'll see the level 4 there. It'll say Xeno Hunting and also in Salvage. That's the Orthrus, that is. And then all you've got to do is make sure you've got enough time on the clock remaining to get yourself over there so you can go and give it a little bit of grief. So, here we are. This is level four. I've got all my AX enhanced missiles ready. My cutter is ready. I'm ready. Got my, feel, my finger poised on the field neutralizer ready. I'm just waiting for that Orthrus to come in and give it a bit. So, here we go. It's making all the right sounds. There's the red recticule. He's coming through, or she's coming through, or it's coming through. It's on its way, either. I'm ready. Okay, right. All the sounds are happening. This is good stuff. Here it is. I've got the night vision on as well, so we can see what's going on. So, start off, let's give it a couple of tickles with the beam laser. I think, there you are, that's going to start... It thinking about firing off its neutralizing uh, wave. I countered that with my field neutralizer, and now I'm just going to open up, and I'm going to keep on firing until that thing stops moving. That's the good thing about the enhanced AX missile racks. Speed, the size of the racks, and they're not Guardian weapons. So all this caustic guft that the Orthrus gives out and the wave that neutralizes Guardian technology doesn't make the blindest bit of difference to me. I'm still hammering it. So its shields are down now, uh, and every sort of like missile volley takes off about 10% should I hit it squarely on. Now I'm going through a little bit of a reload right now on some of the, the missiles. So I'm right up its trumpet, 27% left, still firing. I could stay out of that caustic wake, I suppose. There you are, 0%. I have soloed my first Orthrus. Now, I've done it in a team, yes. And I could have done it quicker, yes. But how did I do it? And what's my build like? Well, here's the build for the Orthrus Hunter. So, let's talk about them. So, here we are in the Orthrus Hunter version 2. Now, what have I done that's slightly different to what I've done on version 2? Well, the truth of the matter is, I've gone for all enhanced AX missile racks. Some people will argue with me on how I've done this, but the proof of soloing an Orthrus was seen in this video, with no help from anybody else. So I've gone for that beam laser, the 4A beam laser in the class 4 slot. Why not? Well, sometimes you are going to get tickled by people who aren't Thargoids. And it's, I don't like running with no weapons, but it's a long range thermal vent anyway, and it's certainly going to help with tickling that Orthrus into shooting off his shutdown wave that you can negate with your field neutralizer. And it's going to reduce your heat as well. I've gone for 3B AX enhanced missile rack. We've got two of those in there, look. And they are just standard straight shot. No turrets, none of that malarkey. Just point it at the Orthrus and fire. These things are big enough that well, 
I certainly missed it a couple of times in that video, as you sure saw. But it wasn't as bad as my normal aiming engineers. The rest then are filled up with 2D missile racks. One, two, three, four of those. And then two enhanced missile racks, the 3B ones there. Now, what's the difference between a 3B and a 2D? Well, the mass, they're heavier on the 3B ones, as you can imagine. Um, the integrity is higher, 64 as opposed to 51. The power draw is slightly more, 1.72 megawatts on the 3B, as opposed to the 1.3 megawatts on the 2D. The damage the 2D does is 32, the same as what the 3B does. And the real difference here is, right, the thermal load, because it's bigger on the 3B, but the ammo clip size is 12 on the 3B, as opposed to 8 on the 2D. Okay, so the maximum ammo the 3B can hold is 128, and the maximum the 2D can hold is the 64. So the clip size, I think, is probably perhaps the most important thing here. So, there you go. Pretty easy. Next, on the utility mounts. Well, I got a shutdown field neutralizer, which you only need one, and I've recently only just learned how to do it, and do it successfully. Don't laugh at me. I know I've been playing a long time. That's just the way it is. I've been busy doing other stuff. Got my anti xeno scanner, but I didn't use that once, to be perfectly honest with you. My caustic sink launcher for any caustic guft and caustic damage that that Orthrus is going to turn around and have a go at me at. I've got it tricked out um, with the maximum ammo of seven there as opposed to the standard, which is five, as you can see there. So I've got a couple of caustic sink launchers, just in case. And this build, I can also just rip those weapons off, and I can go Maelstrom hunting this amount of caustic sink launchers in there. Um, I've got a heat sink launcher, standard, and I've got a heat sink launcher, engineered. Pre-engineered, in fact, and it's got additional capacity. So that goes through the utility mount. Core internal, reactive surface composite is what I've gone for there. Some people have gone for military spec and just you know deep plated that i've got heavy duty armor and deep plating it's much of a muchness the power plant overcharged thrusters dirty drives um frame shift drive yes increased range i've got four pips on that life support 7a i don't think it makes that much of a difference to me really um i had one knocking about so i fitted it the power distributor is all modified and tricked up for engine power distributor and cluster capacitors. Now, it could be better, it should be weapon focused. I know, that's what I had on the ship. Sensors, 7D, and they're lightweight, I believe. No, they're long range on these ones. And there's the old standard fuel tank, because you've got to have go-go juice. Next up, on the optional internals, got a multi Olympic controller. Now, typically, that I would have hung around and picked up all the items there, but I incurred a little bit of damage. Hull reinforcement packages, 5D, 1, 2, 3, 4. All these reinforcement and module reinforcement I've got here. The hull reinforcement, modified, heavy-duty reinforcement, deep plating. Not maximum, but, you know, it's, it's nearly there. Got the module, standard module reinforcement as well. Got the 5F experimental weapon stabilizers, gives me the option of having those six experimental weapons. Hull plating, hull plating, hull plating. I got a 4E anti-corrosion cargo rack in there, bit of module, detailed surface scanner, because why not? And I've got my advanced planetary approach suite, just in case. And that, everybody, is the build. And that allowed me to solo an Orthrus. Something I've been chasing. That's been my white whale I've been chasing for a while. So, nothing too complicated. Certainly effective. The key to fighting the Orthrus, however, is using that shutdown field neutralizer. Now, like I said, once you've got a ship that you think can stand up to the hassle of the Orthrus, and to be fair, they're not that challenging. There's no hearts to shoot. It's just getting the shield down and then dropping its hull, okay? Um, so you can probably do this in something as small as a Challenger, I would say, or perhaps even a Chieftain. I went for a bigger ship because I'm not that good at combat, and that's widely renowned if you watched any of my streams. The hardest part is actually finding one. Even, like I said, 
in the galaxy map showing that it's an Athergoid alert type state, it's actually finding those signal source level fours where it says, you know, salvage. That's the hardest thing. And once you have found it, then I suppose it's just a matter of just laying down enough damage before it jumps away. And then when it jumps away, you've then got to deal with any scouts. So it could be handy to have, say, a machine gun fitted and not that beam laser. It's up to you. I'm sure there are better builds out there than mine. Let me know in the comments if you've got a better build for hunting the Orthrus than I have. I certainly would be interested in knowing exactly what your build's like and how I can possibly replicate it. Anyway, I've been Ricardo. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon.